Hello everyone, my name is Kyle Bentley. I'm an application engineer with Pro MP Alarm. In this snack bite video, we're going to be looking at the assembly cloning and how we can make a copy of our assembly and possibly send it to a vendor, or we could create a revision with the assembly clone. So with NX Open, you can then perform a clone assembly. However, you do not have to be inside of the assembly file or have a part open. You can simply do it from the welcome page. So the assembly clone is not on by default. So we can go to the menu pull down, go to assemblies, go to cloning, and then run the create clone. From here you have four different tabs. You have your main tab, the load options, naming, and log files. In the main tab is where you specify the assembly or even a part that you want to clone. From here in your load options is how you load in the different parts for that assembly. Underneath the naming rule is where you can specify how you want to name those parts. And there's two options for that. There's a username and a naming rule. If you use the username, this will allow you to name each individual part. If you want NX to automate that process, you can use the naming rule. And here there is four different options, prefix, suffix, replace, and rename. For this example, I'm going to go ahead and use the suffix and then specify it as underscore rev B for a revision. And then you have to specify the output directory for those parts and assemblies to go to. From here you can then specify an output log file to see the report of your clone assembly if you want. However, you do not have to do this step. From here on the main window you're going to see your load option that you have specified, whether you have a naming rule specified or a username, and then the assembly you have specified and the output directory the parts and assemblies are going to. Below that is the execute and dry run. If you select clear, that'll clear all of the information and then you can start it again. In here, if you want to see an example run and you don't want it to perform just yet, you can select the dry run and then hit the execute. From here, it'll pop up with the information window and then you can see which parts it's using such as 2023251916-001. And here you're going to see that same name and then the Rev B. Okay, so all of my parts are being renamed to Rev B. So that's what I want. And then it's outputting to the G00123 underscore Rev B folder. So I'm going to go ahead and execute that. And then I'm going to go ahead and pull up a file explorer. And then let's see those parts. So as you can see, all of those parts have now been renamed to Rev B. Okay, so that's how we create a revision. How do we create a copy of those parts? Let's look at that here. So I'm going to go ahead and clear all of those options. I'm going to go ahead and select my assembly. Make sure to specify your load option if it's not from directory. And then I'm going to go ahead and specify a naming rule. Now, however, for the create a copy assembly, you have to specify the naming rule as suffix and then just simply put a space in here so the OK comes available. Okay, specify the output directory. And then we can see the main window and what options we have specified. So I can see the load option is specified, my naming rule is specified, I have my assembly and the output directory. Okay, let's go ahead and perform a dry run or an example so it doesn't perform it just yet. So you can see the different parts are now being cloned or in this case copied. So they, they are the exact same part name. Okay, so that's what I want. I'm gonna go ahead and execute that. And then I'm gonna go ahead here and pull up a file explorer. 
All right, and here I then have copies of those parts I can then send to my vendor. So that is how we could use the clone assembly to create copies of our assembly to possibly send to our vendors or even create a revision of our assembly.